Hey guys, it's Lindsay at Road Trip Soul, and today I want to talk to you about mattresses for sleeping in your car. And I just realized you can see my reflection in the car behind me. I'm gonna pretend like it's okay. <laughs> you can see my whole setup. So, um, to record this video, I'm using my phone on a tripod, which you can very clearly see in the reflection, on top of my cooler, <laughs> on top of my picnic blanket. <laughs> class. It's all class. <laughs> so the majority of the questions that I get about my car camper build out are around the bed. Um, especially in a car like the Honda Civic, it's very small and I think the bed is probably one of the more challenging pieces. Where I started with my car camper build out was actually the mattress because I knew that if I didn't have a good mattress, I would not get any quality of sleep. So there's about six factors you're probably going to want to consider for your mattress. Size, because it doesn't matter how great a mattress is, it doesn't matter if you got it for free, it doesn't matter if it's the most comfortable thing in the world if it won't actually fit inside your car. So make sure when you go to measure your space, you measure both like the horizontal space like how wide your space is and then also how long and how deep. If you watch my video on how I made my car camper bed, which I'll put a video right here, see like the vertical space that I'm working with for my bed and there's only a couple inches between my legs and the top of the opening into the trunk. Make sure that you measure that vertical depth. The second thing that you're gonna to want to take into consideration is obviously the price. If you're camping in your car, there's a good chance that you're not a millionaire. Or maybe you are, you know what, you do you. I just know I'm not a millionaire, and the second thing I considered was price. The mattress was the most expensive part of my car camper build out. The prices of the items that I'm gonna talk about in this video range anywhere from $30 all the way up to like three or $400. Figure out how much you're willing to spend. The third thing is obviously comfort. We're gonna talk about a range of options, all with sort of varying levels of comfort and durability. Depending on what kind of sleeper you are, those two things might get weighed differently. If you're planning on sleeping on this every night and you're a large person, you probably want a more durable material and a more durable mattress than if you're someone who is planning on doing this kind of recreationally and maybe is lighter, so durability isn't as much of a concern. The next thing we're gonna talk about is insulation and R value. R value is the insulation of a material, and it's basically how warm it will stay in the winter if you're trying to sleep in the cold. You're gonna learn more about foam and R value than you ever want the more research you do into buying mattresses for car camping. So things like air, which just like are open and change temperature very quickly will be cold and have a low R value and things like closed cell foam um, will tend to hold their heat a little bit more. Noise that a mattress makes and also its smell. If you go to a computer or get on your phone and Google mattresses for sleeping in the car, the first thing that's gonna come up are these inflatable air mattresses. And these are basically like giant pool toys that are squares that fit into the back of a car or into the back of a truck and then have blocks that extend um, to fit down into the wheel wells. I did not buy one of these, so I don't have one to show you, but I'll see if I can like find a picture and post it here. These inflatable pool toy blocky wheel well things um, do have some like attractive features. Super cheap. They're probably one of the more cheap options out there for sleeping in your car. The ones I found were ranging anywhere from like $25 to $30, which is great. You don't need a bed frame with these. So with mine, I ended up having to build like a frame to like extend into the trunk and it eliminates slope and then go over the footwell and if you get this you don't need to worry about like covering the footwell you just sleep on this mattress. Inflatable truck or car air mattresses are also um, waterproof because they're made of plastic so that's another pro in their favor if you think you're gonna like wet the bed or something and if you do no, no shame. So those are the good things about these inflatable car, truck, mattress things, I wouldn't recommend you get one of these for a variety of reasons. Number one, the durability is going to be much lower on these, like they are going to pop and you're going to have to like keep patching holes, especially if you have like animals or like sharp objects inside the car, which you probably do because you're camping. Second and probably the most important thing is you need those foot wells that those blocks extend down into for storage. If you're camping in your car, space is at a premium and there's no way that you can just like take that space and use it for air. You might be able to like move stuff to the front seat, which I do with my configuration, but I use every square inch of my car for storage. And so the idea of just taking prime footwell space and then filling it with nothing um, just seems like not like not a good idea to me. If you're planning on camping in the winter or in the cold, this is gonna be an awful, awful option for you. 
Air mattresses have no insulation. And so if you're sleeping on it in the cold, all that air below you is gonna fill up with cold. It's just gonna get cold. The air mattress is gonna get flat because the pressure is gonna drop because the air is getting colder and you're gonna be miserable all night. Any blanket you put on top of you, you won't be able to stay warm. If you're planning on winter camping, it's you do not want an air mattress. Second option for if you Google like sleeping on the road or sleeping in your car or sleeping in a truck is gonna be they make these little RV mattresses for like people in RVs or um, professional truck drivers, like so people who are on the road and live in their rigs. So I found some of these that were as small as 28 inches wide and then six and a half feet long. So depending on your car, you might be able to get away with that. Can't get away with that in a Honda Civic because my bed is six feet exactly by 24 inches. So like, I think I had 25 inches space, my mattress is 24 inches. It might work for yours. Some reasons you might want this is like, it's an actual mattress. You get to sleep on an actual mattress while you're sleeping in your car. They've been designed for people on the road. Like this isn't something that you're gonna be like trying to like force to work for you. Like it is made for people sleeping in vehicles. And obviously they're not gonna smell or make noise. Well, I guess it's not obvious. It could smell, I don't know. Um, what people do to packages left on your front door, but it shouldn't smell. And because it's a real mattress, it shouldn't make any noise. There are some bad sides to these. They're expensive. I was seeing these range anywhere from, like they were around $200. And like the more, like if you got a nice memory foam one, it was like over $200. So um, actually I think that was over $300. If you wanna go that route, be prepared to like shell out some money. God. It's either a rooster or a person. I don't know if you hear it or not. I think it's a person. You're not going to be able to like get a whole wide variety of ranges in, for those mattresses because they're regular mattresses. You're not going to be able to like fold it or roll it up or compress it or move it around a whole lot. Like once it's in the bed, it's in the bed. You can either take the whole thing out or put the whole thing back, but that's it. If you're like me and you have a configuration where you need to like move and like say, well, this is how I set up to sleep. And then I fold everything away and then and this is how I set up to cook and this is how I set up to be on the road. You're not going to do that with like a real mattress that's like literally just sitting in your car. Um, the majority of the ones that I saw online were made of open cell foam, which means they can get cold at night because they're just full of air that's open. So it's open cell foam. Again, you can do things to increase the R value if you need to. Um, the other thing I was seeing just in the reviews, even though I wasn't, like I was just doing research for you guys because I'm a giver. Some of the reviews online report that these do compress because they're foam and then they like compress them to ship them to you and then they like pop open out of the box when you buy it. I guess if you're a large person who sleeps on it for a long period of time, it, it can compress a little bit. And the ones I was seeing were anywhere from like five and a half to six and a half inches deep, which is way too big for my setup. Um, but so depending on how much compression you can take, that might not be a problem. The other option, if you like go to YouTube and say how to sleep in your car or how to make a bed in your car, you're gonna find a lot of videos of teenage boys who like throw a sheet of plywood in their car and then like just like roll some upholstery foam over it and they lay on it and they're like, it's great. This is how I sleep in my car. The things about upholstery foam is it is cheap. Like you can get it anywhere. You just like go down to the craft store, pick up a roll of upholstery foam. This is the stuff that they like make um, to replace the foam in like couches. So if your couch gets really squished down, you like take off the fabric, put your foam down, and then like reupholster it. That's what upholstery foam is. Ultimately, I think upholstery foam is gonna be a good option for layering on other options, depending on what your setup ends up looking like. For some reasons you wouldn't want upholstery foam, um, <laughs> it's gonna compress. Like that's what it's made to do, is to squish down. It does come in a variety of densities and it does come in a variety of um, like, thicknesses and so I was finding some that is high density up to like four and a half inches thick and so if you got that um, it might not be um, that compressible but I also don't know how comfortable it would be if it's high density so just kind of do some research and try to figure out what would be the best option depending on what you need it to do again it's open air it's open cell foam so it's it probably won't get hard but it will definitely get cold um, and also because it's unlined, it's going to get really dirty. And one thing about like sleeping in your car is dirt just like gets in the car for no reason. And you're like, I literally just swept this car out and now it's full of like leaves and sand. Um, and so you don't necessarily want like unlined foam that you can't wash very easily sitting on your bed. These like small, um, like tri-folding um, memory foam mattress pads. And I think they're made for houses, like as a guest bed that you just like put in the closet and some of them are 
them like standard twin size, and then some of them are actually smaller. I think these look great. They um, fold out, they're like six inches, so you know, they're foldable, they're like six inches deep, so they're probably be pretty comfortable. Well, four to six inches deep, so they're, they'd probably be pretty comfortable. They're lined so they won't get dirty. Their mid-range price compared to some of the other options we're talking about today, the ones I found ranged anywhere from like $60 to $100. So kind of like a good medium price point. The reviews that I saw online all said that they were like super comfortable and they were really glad they bought them. So some things that aren't good is memory foam does get cold in, cold in the hard. <laughs> cold in the hard does get hard in the cold. The sizes also might not work for you. This, the, the most narrow one I found was 25 inches wide, which is too big for me. They are, like they're a little bit more mobile than like just a giant like mattress for an RV, but ultimately like they're not gonna be as compressible as some of the camping pads that we're about to talk about. If you do need to like move it around a whole lot, this might not be the best option. They are four to five inches thick, most of them, which is too thick for me. No, I'm not even, I'm not even touching it. So that's folding, trifold, folding, trifolds. All right, so now let's talk about camping um, mattress pads. Depending on your um, size of your car, like if you're in a Honda Civic, you're probably gonna end up with camping mattress pads because there's not a whole lot of space and you need to like take advantage of the space as much as possible. The first option that you're gonna see if you get in there and start looking are um, air pads. These are generally self-inflating, but some of them you do need a, like an electric pump. Air pads, are, these are gonna be the most compressible of any of the options we're talking about today. They're made for backpackers and hikers, and so they like, you can squish them down and like roll them up and like they get down to like really, really small. They do need to be inflated, and so you would either have to, I mean, some of them, they have like a self-inflating like valve that you open, and in theory, they should be self-inflating. I've never been super impressed by those kind of air pads because they've never worked that well. So you either have to get an air, like an air pump, or blow it up with your mouth. And I recommend you just don't blow these up with your mouth. Like, I'm normally like, I'm, I'm a prepper, and I'm like, self-reliant and I don't need air pumps but if you blow up an air mattress with your mouth you're gonna be getting moisture inside the air mattress from your mouth and it will either freeze in the winter or mold in the summer don't no, just don't do it it's gross like it's just gross don't do it air pads have again we talked about this earlier with the like the inflatable truck mattress pad um, they have low R value so they're gonna be colder some of them um, have pretty good reviews so if you find one that does have a slightly higher R value, um, get it, because most of them don't. Only air pads can develop leaks and holes, and you might have to patch them, and that's a pain in the butt, and I wouldn't want to do it for you. Next type of uh, camping pad we're going to talk about are the closed cell camping pads. Um, and so this is one of the few ones we've talked, we've been talking a lot about like open cell foam, like memory foam and upholstery foam and like this like open cell foam. Closed cell foam camping pads are exactly what they sound like. Like it's been in completely enclosed with foam and there's air trapped inside, which is what gives it like its compression, but the air is not like interacting directly with the great outdoors. These camping pads will stay warmer than almost all the other options. They're super durable, roll up pretty tightly, like, and they roll up really easily. Like they're very easy to put away. They're really easy to get out. They also are one of the more affordable options. These are probably gonna be like, if you need a starter mattress, like a closed cell foam mattress is not a bad idea. Okay, they can be rolled up really easily, but they don't compress because again, the air, like they're not squishable. So the air doesn't leave it. So it, it rolls up to like this. And I've slept on them before, and they're, they're really not bad. They're better than sleeping on the ground, for sure. And one time I slept in one and my tent flooded, and the foam actually floated on top, and so my feet stayed dry. That being said, they are probably the least comfortable <laughs> of the options. Like, you're gonna feel stuff through it. It doesn't have that much compression. Like, if you're young and a good sleeper, like, that is probably maybe a good option for you. If you are like me and you need things to be cozy and comfortable, um, there may be some better options for you out there. And finally, um, camping, inflating, open air foam pads. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds. It's a foam pad. It's a foam pad, but it also inflates. And so it kind of has like 
the squishability of the foam, but then like the support of the air, but then the foam increases the R value, so it's a little bit warmer. The durability is better than some of the other options that are out there. They're better insulated because they do have that foam air connection, like the foam keeps it a little bit warmer. They're more durable, they're waterproof, and then also the firmness is adjustable. So <laughs> for my mattress, um, if I pump that mattress all the way up, it's the one I have, I have one of these, and it's like four inches wide, um, and I can barely fit my, like if I, I can fit my legs through the hole into my trunk, but I can't really fit my legs and blankets. So what I did is I just like deflated the mattress slightly, so then it's a little bit more soft, and then a little bit more like, it's like a little nest, and then I can actually fit my legs into the trunk, so it's like a good option for me. Weaknesses, like they are, bulkier than some other options so depending on how much space you have like you might not be able to fit it I just leave mine unrolled and then just like compress all the air out of it and then fold it away so it's not like a chunk of space when I am set up for on the road they can be punctured they can be ripped you can get um, I don't think I mean mine's pretty durable they can be expensive like this is probably um, the the most they're gonna be the most expensive out of the mattress camping pads for sure. They're not as expensive as like the actual mattress for like an RV or a truck, but they're gonna be much more expensive than most of the other options. So it is like an investment. Like you need to really want like a nice mattress. The one that I got, I spoiler, I got an insulated open air foam mattress pad and I did a ton of research and this is what I decided on. I'll show it to you if you want to see it. I got a Thermarest Neo Air Dream. I got they, they come in long and extra long, which I think they should just call normal and long. If there's only two sizes, you can't be long and extra long, in my opinion. It's a little longer than six feet. I think it's I think it's like six feet and four inches or something. And then I just like curl the mattress up at the ends so that like it like sits above my mattress. 25 inches by 77 inches. So yeah, and then it's four inches thick. Um, it weighs four pounds two ounces and it has an R value of six, so six out of 10. That's not bad. I'll go ahead and inflate it now. I did also have to get, um, I got like a inflator and this plugs into the, what's it called? Cigarette lighter? I'm sure it's not called a cigarette lighter anymore because they don't come with cigarette lighters, they just come with little heating elements. Anyway, cigarette lighters. Plugs into the cigarette lighter and then you can pump up your mattress pad. Let me try to just... I wonder if that gonna stay. Not gonna stay. Ah! Comes with a stuff sack. Like it has little strappy straps and a warning that I haven't bothered to take off because it's like too tough and I need to cut it off and just had it go. So I just like unstrap it and what I'll do is I'll roll it out over my bed. The bed frame that I have, I mean. And it has this like soft liner and it's, <laughs> you can tell I use it because it's covered in stuff. So it has this bow that you unscrew and then you use this here. Um, let me, I'll show you. Like, well, let's just blow it up. Let's time it and we'll see. So, we can cover what? Plug this. And I think it took like a minute and a half. Not bad. I really like this mattress pad. Um, 
super comfortable. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm on a mattress pad. I guess it does like make some kind of nylon-y noise on the bottom. But I like that it has a liner and I can take this off and wash it if I need to. I like that it's comfortable. I like that I can like squish all the air out and just fold it up and put it away. Um, yeah, recommended. So if you're in the process of building your own bed to camp in your car, let me know which mattress type you ended up deciding. And if you have specific like recommendations for types of mattresses, like please leave comments so that other people can see them. Um, I get a lot of comments on my blog about people who are converting their cars and are really looking for recommendations on like equipment and gear and stuff. So this is my recommendation. I'll put some links of other options that we talked about. Um, and also a link to my blog down below where I have like a whole comparison chart. So that if you're looking for something specific, you can kind of like try to find what works for you. Otherwise, um, please, like this video please follow my channel because i'm still trying to get to affiliate i'm over halfway there now though so at this rate it'll take me um just another eight months <laughs> remember adventure awaits and i mean i think ultimately upholstery film is <laughs> this is the noisiest filming location ever Is it unethical to throw a rock at a bird if you don't intend to hit the bird? I didn't hit the bird. I did shake the tree, but I didn't hit the bird.